Good evening or afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another weather forecast here by Agents of the Forecast. This will be another update here on this major potential severe weather outbreak here that will be happening all, uh, starting tomorrow, really, and then continuing all on and off all the way up to Thursday and maybe even Friday. But we do have a very big threat, especially for, again, win, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. We do have an enhanced risk. It's very likely you can maybe possibly have a moderate risk. But we're definitely seeing very strong tornadoes. A large, very large hail, damaging straight line winds, and possibly squall lines are all likely here. We're going to continue to look at these major updates on the SPC outlook and radars and multiple other models. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, guys. We are so close to 2,190 subscribers, so please subscribe if you are new. We've been getting a ton of supporters in the past couple of days, and it really means a lot. Just hit that big subscribe button, and it takes one second, and you, then you'll get daily weather forecasts. Uh, so we're going to continue to look at the map the map I made earlier today, and then we'll just be getting into these major updates. And the potential for a so-called tornado outbreak is becoming a lot more likely. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and let's get into this uh, up update. So this is uh, this is the same map I actually showed on yet uh, the video I made earlier this morning. Again, I made this earlier uh, earlier in the morning uh, and during when I was still doing schoolwork. And again. Uh, this is not the SPC outlook, guys. This is not what the SPC outlook. So these colors do not indicate the enhanced, the slight, the high, the moderate. Th that does not mean this. So this is not the SPC outlook, and this is not what I think it's going to look like. This is just using colors showing you who, who I think will have the highest risk based on all the models and all the things we'll be looking at just based on using that. So this pink color is not a high risk. It's just... That pink area, whoever's in that pink, means they have the highest risk for very large tornadoes or the best chance or probability. And that yellow and also the greens indicating the lower chance, not a, a marginal slight. If you guys hope, I hope you guys understand that now a bit more. But uh, as you can tell, it looks like our area of focus def uh, tomorrow is definitely right here. This is not just going to be for tomorrow. This is going to be for tomorrow and also uh, also Wednesday morning. This is where we have our best chance for seeing very large and scattered tornadoes, uh, possibly for incredibly large hail. Uh, hail is definitely the biggest threat as of right now. And then the second biggest threat is straight line winds. As of right now, tornadoes is the least, uh, most, really not the uh, the biggest threat with only a 5% chance, but it's a bit more widespread now with the up, up in the SPC outlook. And then even in the red area, we also have a very big risk of severe weather, including squall lines, uh, supercells, Echo, uh, high echo tops, also going to be seeing possibilities for very strong and damaging winds, straight line winds, and a ton of hail. So even if you're really above an enhanced, or not enhanced, if you're above that orange all the way to the pink, you definitely need to watch out. So even if you're in the orange, you're still going to be seeing a very good chance for a possibly for a really strong winds and large hail. And there's a bit of a smaller threat for tornadoes in this area, but still have to watch out. And we have a scattered risk. For, we have a smaller uh, probability risk. That's going to be all the way up to the areas of Wisconsin and all the way to the Gulf Coast. So we have a very widespread threat in general, but it's winding down up to western uh Western Oklahoma, or sorry, Western Arkansas, Eastern Oklahoma, and far northeastern Texas is the area of focus for much of tomorrow and also Wednesday. Now let's get into all the models. So this is now the new SPC outlook here. So as you can tell, we do have a bigger, we actually have a bigger update now. They do, they have now extended a slight risk a bit more now to Wisconsin. Uh, earlier yes, or earlier this morning, it was just on the border. Now it's extended a lot more into uh, a, a lot more into Wisconsin, and now it's going to be extending maybe a bit more into the uh, areas uh, like southern Minnesota. That's really likely. But here we have our area of focus here. The enhanced risk has now been extended a bit more as well. It has been extended a bit more into Kansas and a bit more into Missouri. So area of threat is a bit more widespread. They should extend this enhanced risk actually a bit more for these areas as well. They should extend the enhanced risk for these areas, I think that is going to be a bit necessary. So here again, our highest risk is a level three. It's actually uh, not 100% impossible, or it's actually uh, not 100% likely, but it's not impossible that we'll have possibility a possibility for a moderate risk to maybe be extended right here in these areas. Not uh, there's a possibility, but it's not incredibly likely. But here we have our highest risk for severe weather and enhanced risk. That's going to be for Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and Arlington. 
these cities have been getting hit really hard in the past couple of weeks, especially in the recent week with the severe weather now becoming a bit more widespread now to the original tornado alley, like I want to call it, and then far western Dixie Alley. So that's going to be for around 17 million people and then Hanchfris, and it definitely will become a lot more widespread. We also have other areas like Joplin, Little Rock. Tornado threat has, again, becoming a lot has become a lot more widespread uh this two per, uh, the five percent chance was only in these areas uh earlier today now it's extended all the way into the texas area so this is where we had now a bit more of a widespread uh tornado threat which is why i said it's a possibility now we can maybe maybe by tomorrow if this we have a 10 percent chance possibly call it a tornado outbreak but still, not necessarily, I think, calling a tornado outbreak will be over, overstepping this. Uh, if we have a 10% chance, it might be, maybe, necessary. it could be necessary to call it a tornado outbreak. But not exactly likely to be a huge tornado outbreak. It's more of a severe weather outbreak. Here we have, again, a 5% chance is a higher risk for tornadoes, which is actually a decent chance for tornadoes, uh, just based on how it's not exactly a, a huge chance of really predicting a tornado in the exact location. That's going to be for Oklahoma City, all the way up to the Rockford area in Aurora, Illinois. Wind threat still a very high risk, uh, really high, uh, still at a high probability. We have a significant, severe risk that is showing you. We're definitely going to be seeing some very strong winds. So our 30% chance right here is going to be, uh, of course, for areas into the South Central Plains. That's where we have our best threat for winds, which is why also we have that enhanced risk. That's going to be for around 17 million people, mostly those areas in the enhanced risk. That's going to be for Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and Arlington. And then we have a scattered 5% chance all the way up to the uh, Midwest areas like Wisconsin. So still seeing a very widespread severe weather, uh, uh, severe uh, winds uh, that are part of the severe weather bands. But we also have some very strong winds that are not a non-severe weather winds. And then our hail threat is now has actually minimized a lot more. It has now gone really outside of Arkansas. It was a bit more into Arkansas, just a little bit more. So it's now becoming more of an Oklahoma threat for hail. So we're still going to be seeing a 15% chance for hail all the way up into Wisconsin. Uh, but our biggest or main threat for hail, especially very large hail, will be in Oklahoma, where it can be possibly seen two inch size or uh, hail or larger in diameter. That's gonna be for areas like uh, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Norman, Broken Arrow, and Edmond, Oklahoma. Now, as we look into the models, uh, the NAM 3KM model here, the European model though, this is gonna be showing you uh, the severe weather starting off in the next 14 hours here into the North Central Plains. So this is gonna bring a severe weather threat all the way into North Dakota. So again, not just gonna be a South Central system. This is, gonna be, this is why it's such a widespread severe weather outbreak. That's gonna bring some quite some strong bands moving to the Southern South Dakota areas and far Southeastern North Dakota. In the next 24 hours, this is when we start to see these bands developing into Kansas and Oklahoma. So as you can tell, these bands will be developing really late in the day uh, tomorrow. So it's gonna be developing in the late afternoon. Uh, but we will be seeing a all-day threat for the North Central Plains all the way from North Dakota to the areas of Wisconsin. This will be seeing our main area of focus. That's going to bring some strong bands for the Minneapolis area, uh, parts into Mass, Wisconsin. And then as we continue uh, getting closer to the evening hours, we start to see these severe weather bands definitely uh, strengthening for now. Southwestern Missouri, starting to see these bands start to ramp up in Oklahoma, and they start to ramp up a lot more as we get now into eastern Oklahoma, Western Arkansas, which is why I have this pink in these areas and these reds in these areas. Definitely be seeing some very powerful squall lines. Uh, we're still seeing that severe weather threat for the, uh, as well, the Midwest. But look at these extremely strong bands now. This is definitely be some very powerful squall lines out there into northeastern Texas, including way, uh, getting towards the Waco area, moving to the Texarkana areas, and that's going to be affecting Little Rock. Uh, Jonesboro going to be affecting Memphis, and that's going to be heading straight for these areas in Mississippi, Louisiana, and more of eastern Texas. So that's going to be heading areas like Memphis, and that's where we're going to be seeing the severe weather risk now for southern Illinois, parts of the Ohio uh, Ohio Valley and lower Mississippi River Basin. Uh, that's going to be affecting as well the areas near Monroe, affecting areas like Alexandria, and then we'll see more of a very big uh, flooding threat and more of like just heavier rain, scattered thunderstorms off into the Tennessee Valley and much of the Ohio Valley as well. And that could bring some more rain to the Appalachias and um, just outside the Appalachias uh, for Thursday and late Wednesday. By tomorrow, again, the next 12 hours, this is when we start to see these bands developing out here into the south, into the north central plains, seeing that low pressure system 
bring that really heavy rain north of that. For, that's going to be north of up here. That's going to be for now southern uh, North Dakota. And then as we, as you can tell, it's going to be some stronger bands. They're not going to be some very weak. They're going to be being quite powerful. Uh, but tornado threat still not as high as it, it's not as high really to really panic or anything. But still going to be in precautions. So that's what we see those bands developing there. But we're going to be keeping our eye, our main focus of severe weather is the South Central. In the next 23 hours, you see these bands developing. Uh, we're going to be seeing these pop-up storms from all the humidity, all the moisture. Um, we're going to be seeing wind shear, but it's not impressive. So really not wind shear. It's not a, a huge uh, factor. Overday heating as well with a very strong, uh, really warm uh, air. This is why we're going to be seeing these pop-up systems. And that's going to be causing a low-pressure system here just into northern Texas, not far from Lubbock. That's going to produce some very, that's actually going to strengthen these storms a whole lot as it moves into southwestern Missouri and starts to pop up now, moving to the Tulsa area as well into southern Missouri. And these bands do connect into Wednesday morning. So this is going to be really an overnight system. Just look at this huge squall. And this is absolutely crazy. Very likely to cause extremely large hail. That's exactly why we extended this 5% chance now into the south central. This is going to be stretching for Arkansas, uh, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. It's going to be affecting Gainesville, Texas, areas into south, uh, eastern Tex uh, southeastern Oklahoma, and areas into northern and western Arkansas. This is definitely going to cause a huge threat for Little Rock. Uh, heading towards the Dallas area uh, as well, of course, Jonesboro. This is exactly why we have this pink and red colors for Texas, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Even by later Wednesday, getting closer to the late morning, we're still going to be seeing this huge squall line uh, moving to, uh, past the uh, Waco area, heading towards College Station, Monroe, heading towards the Mississippi River now, heading into Mississippi, Tennessee. And we also have that very big severe weather threat for southern Illinois and eastern Missouri as well. As we move into Wednesday, these bands will continue to actually affect areas now into the uh, Baton Rouge area, into New Orleans, Lake Charles. That's going to cause in a threat for severe weather there. And then by late Wednesday in the day, we will be seeing really in the early afternoon, very strong, uh, really heavy and strong winds as well. Heavy rain as well into the Ohio Valley. And then this would be causing a bit of a severe weather threat. Now for Georgia, we could be seeing multiple pop-up storms overnight into Wednesday all the way into Thursday morning. And we can possibly have maybe another huge severe weather risk uh, heading towards the mid-Atlantic areas and also going to be seeing very strong winds set in place. Now for Cape Valleys here, we will be seeing a, a little limited amount of energy until Tuesday morning. So this is Tuesday morning. We won't be seeing that much energy, really. Energy uh, flow, the energy flow from the Gulf will be very weak, not seeing too much moisture, humidity. Uh, obviously, this will be in the morning, so not seeing overday heating. So we're going to be seeing the lower numbers amount of energy up Cape Valley. We're seeing the, maybe the high 3,000s, mid-3,000s. And then as we get more into Tuesday, numbers do drop. But as we now get this flow strengthening a bit more, we're going to be seeing a lot higher numbers. and be a lot more widespread with this humidity. Now, Tuesday in the afternoon, we're seeing a lot more, uh, we're seeing higher temperatures. And it's going to bring a lot more energy in the atmosphere. We're going to be seeing really high 3,000s, 3,800, 3,700. And then by later Wednesday morning, uh, and right in the overnight hours, these bands really strengthen as we had a whole day of overday heating. Uh, seeing that moisture now continue to strengthen. Uh, we're going to have, again, that, do that defined low pressure system right here. That's going to cause these very strong squall lines to uh, develop maybe even some pop-up systems with all the amounts of energy here. So definitely be seeing a big risk for overnight hours. going to be getting very, very close to 5,000 joules per kilogram, which is very high. And the numbers do die down by later Wednesday in the day as these bands do move closer to the southeast. We're going to be looking at the, S, uh, the STP here, which is supercell, uh, supercell, uh, sorry, significant tornado parameter. We're going to be seeing really the risk of tornadoes in these areas. So as we get into Tuesday and in really uh, in the late morning hours, we will be seeing a really low number, around a four or maximum in Texas. So we're going to be seeing, again, really weak energy. We will be seeing the low pressure. This is not developing later until later in the day uh, on Wednesday. As we see this low pressure system now defi being defined now to northern Texas later into Tuesday night or uh, Tuesday afternoon, We'll see these numbers getting a bit higher now, 4.3 uh, 4 on this SCP, which is, again, a low. And then as we get now closer to Tuesday in the evening, getting around night, we'll be seeing a 7.4 pop-up into northeastern Texas, which is where we have that risk now, a 5% chance for tornadoes. And now into Wednesday in the morning with this huge, again, really large squall line that will be moving in, we now have 11, an 11 
on this uh, SCP, which is actually quite high. It's actually very, very high, and that's definitely be a really high, indicating a very uh, high risk for tornadoes in those areas. And that's what we're looking at there. Last thing we'll be looking at is wind shear. So, because wind shear, of course, is really the main thing you want to see for severe weather development. So, by as by Wednesday, uh, we will be seeing a uh, actually strong amount of wind shear now uh, out here into from all the way into northwestern Canada, and that's going to be spilling out into the United States. We'll be seeing a ton of wind shear, uh, of course, bringing that system. Here we have the defined low pressure system. That low pressure system here we'll be seeing, uh, of course, these uh, the moisture spilling out in the Gulf. We'll be seeing the stream bringing the winds and then popping it up. So we'll be seeing really the really the strong uh, high amounts of uh, wind shear will be in the Gulf. Or so a, a high amount of wind shear uh, flow from the Midwest is why we'll be seeing these uh, uh, really a over day severe weather risk for much of the Midwest. There was a defined low pressure system, and here we have this defined low pressure system now in the Gulf. Oh, sorry, uh, off Texas, and that's going to bring in a a really small and limited amount of uh, really, wind shear. So wind shear is not impressive, and it's actually going to die down. But by Wednesday in the afternoon, as these bands do move eastward, wind shear does increase a little bit now for areas on the other side of the Mississippi River. Now for western Mississippi, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, western Mississippi, western Tennessee, southern Indiana, which is why we have that severe weather risk now as well popping up with these bands now. So definitely going to be seeing wind shear develop or actually strengthening after these bands do cross the south central. And they'll be seeing actually a high amount of uh, wind shear as well in the Appalachians and the southeast. As these bands continue in the overnight hours into Thursday morning. And then so we have a severe weather risk as well all the way into Friday for the northeast, mid-Atlantic. And, and mid-Atlantic, we're going to be seeing very powerful winds and tons of wind shear with these severe weather bands. So definitely going to be seeing straight line winds and a lot of uprooted trees. And we're definitely going to be seeing millions to be uh, in wind advisories by the end of the week. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and bye guys.